Hi, I'm Alois Bunjira and you're listening to this FM Sport Podcast. Z, the, the, the hottest station in the nation. Z, 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 Z FM Stereo. FM Stereo. It's Lionel Messi. He scored. The goal the world wanted. It's time for the biggest sports stories. It's Neymar trying to feed it through. It's a stretch and it's in. interviews is more difficult obviously it's more difficult and all the analysis right here if they play poorly they come back they've got all the excuses they can't have it both ways every weekday it's my sport it's your sport it's cfm sport let's join the team for the biggest show in the world of sport on cfm studio my station your station it's a very good evening, Zimbabwe. It is ZFM Sport uh, starring Mike Madoda as the wise one. Uh, Mark Pozo <laughs> as the sage. Uh, Alice Bungia as the crazy one. Sean Tafiri Nika as the midfielder and Barry Manandi. Appearing as himself. Uh, this is the Sports. <laughs> Every single weekday, we are here delivering a Cracker Jack show, and today is no different. It is Wacky Wednesday. We've been focusing on Oliver Tukumutukudzi and some of his collaborations. Today, we look at him in Mahube. So it should be a good one. Uh, and that team in the studio will deliver it to you. A chicken and a made their title intentions clear by making a number of major signings in the lead up uh, to the 2019 season of the Castle Lager Premier Soccer League. The latest is Dynamo's attacking midfielder Valentine Kadonzo. We'll keep you up to speed with the series decided between South Africa and Pakistan in Cape Town, where the Proteas won the toss and elected to field and restricted the tourists to 240 for the loss of eight wickets, meaning that they'll need to chase 241 to decide the match as well as the series. And Pep Guardiola has refused to give up the Premier League title race despite potentially losing further ground on leaders Liverpool following their shock defeat at Newcastle United last night. So That's the track. I'm so tired. Love as well as uh, Troy Sivan opening up uh, tonight's edition of uh, ZFM Sport. A wacky Wednesday, but you don't get so tired. Keep sending us those hashtags. Pro Feeds Trivia. You could be the one lucky listener we call back straight after our play of the day where we are featuring the Dara the late legend of Zimbabwe music, Oliver Tukum Tukuzi. Stay tuned to your favorite sports show. The Home Front. Local sports news and analysis. From Rufaro to Barberfield, Mandava to Nyamunga, all the perfect moments in the Castle Lager Premier Soccer League come together on ZFM Sport. Now, former Castle Lager Premier Soccer League champions uh, Chicken Inn have made their title intentions clear by making another major signing, this time grabbing Dynamo's attacking midfielder Valentine Cardonzo, who has been training with the club. Cardonzo started training with the Gamecocks on Monday at the Zimbabwe International Trade Fair Grounds and coach Joey Mafero Antipas confirmed the player's presence. Antipas uh, started his pre-season training with the club yesterday after arriving from Germany where he underwent a three-week-long coaching uh, attachment with Bundesliga club Werder Bremen. I'm going to talk about the signings at Chicken Inn momentarily, but I want to talk about the coach, Joey Antipas. That attachment, we've seen him. He went out, I think, uh, to Borussia Dortmund uh, a, a few years ago. He came back. When he came back from that, he managed to win the championship, this time to Werder Bremen possibly the same impact. These attachments really help. Yeah, they do help and uh, I, I was going to exactly give the example which you gave. <laughs> uh, the fact that the last time he was involved in one of these, I think uh, he went like you say to Dortmund and he also went to Denmark to Bronby. Yes. Uh, yeah. And he came back and he swept all before him in the local premiership. It's not going to be that easy this time sure, round. Sure. Uh, he finds of course uh, FC Platinum in fine fettle uh, an FC Platinum side that is well coached by Norman Mapeza uh, and also a number of other ambitious clubs as well uh, mm. who seem to be on the up uh, Caps United has been doing a, a bit of business as well, trying to strengthen their core set of players. Uh, we've also seen Highlanders as well uh, go on the market and bring in a lot of youthful players who the punters out in Mulawayo are very excited about and uh, they believe
believe that uh, they could actually make Highlanders more competitive than ever. Uh, so it's a good thing for jo- uh, for for uh, Mafero uh, mm. to be doing these attachments because I believe, listen, they're, they're playing football at a far higher level than sure. you get anywhere in Africa. So he is going to pick up and learn one or two things. Bunge on to the signings. Uh, he's, uh, it seems that Valentine Cardonzo could be signing uh, imminently. Also, we understand that uh, Brett Amidu uh, is out at the Gamecocks as well. And we know he was on loan at uh, Dynamos from FC Platinum. He's moved over there. Striker Panashim Tasa has been spotted there. And also defender Pakamani Due, who of course who was with Dynamos as well, has been spotted out. These are experienced campaigners. And you can sort of see what the Game- Gamecocks might want, might want to do this coming season. Yeah, of course, you can see the intention, you know, by that attachment that he knows that, you know what, he needs to add something extra. You know, in a league where most coaches are playing a similar a similar kind of game. But uh, the signings, uh, can, I can say that, you know what, this time around, they haven't gone for the, those experienced players. They're actually signing younger players at the moment. Yes. You know, if you look at the age, uh, at the average age of chicken, it was already going. It uh, was. Yes. The wrong but now side, they are yeah. pushing it. Yeah, they are pushing it down, and we, which is very exciting. These youngsters are going to give them uh, something, something big. Valentine Cardozo, very, very, very good signing. I've always talked about this boy. He is something one for the future. He started late, mm. I think, because of whatever happened earlier on in his career. But he is a damn good player. But but hey, the controversy about his signing as well. We hear that Dynamo's are crying about it because he got his clearance, clearance um, in not such a good way. Did you hear about you guys? No, I didn't. They hear say that. that he went to Dynamo, he still had a contract until 2019 December. And he went to Dynamo, say that he wants to go to America to go and study. So he needs to go cleared because he needs to uh, to go on a scholarship. Then he got his clearance from Dynamos, then he moved to... So, very unprofessional, but, but uh, <laughs> was it also uh, 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 because he knew <laughs> He knew his that uh, they, they would not let him go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So then, it's, it's it's more like say a thief to catch a thief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's but a good Mike, way of putting it. Put. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, give me your assessment of just the business that the Chicken Inn has done, and also the chance you mentioned and you alluded to the fact that. Yeah, Joey goes to Germany and, and uh, comes back, but it won't be as easy this time because, of course, you guys and Gezi, uh, Platinum uh, stars that will always be in the shake-up. FC Platinum look like a juggernaut that's going to be difficult to stop. Highlanders has gone younger, uh, they, they, they've, and also they've beefed up their technical team by bringing Big Tim and Love. Uh, they, so there are teams that are also doing business, so it won't be easy, but your assessment of Chicken and Chance. Yeah, uh, listen, I, I think they're, gonna, uh, they're, they're probably going to be the team that pushes uh, FC Platinum the closest. Uh, mm. I get that feeling. You because uh, uh, they, they had a decent season last time out. Uh, and now you've seen the players that they've added. These are players, I think, like Aloy said, push uh, the, the age average at FC at uh, Chicken Inn down. Mm-hmm. You know, where, whereas they were uh, being carried by the likes of Moses Jackson, who's 36 years old. Right. Or Obadiah Tarumbo, who's not too far behind. Uh, Clement Matawe, so, yeah. who's a similar age. Those were some like, uh, yeah, Daron Yandro. Those are sort of like the Sterler names mm. uh, that you got at uh, Chicken Inn and the players, of course, uh, who who were uh, keeping chicken in going. They've gone for young, fast, pacey, uh, skillful players. That's yeah. what I like about the acquisitions made by yeah. Joey Antipas. Yeah. These are players who can play because Chicken Inn used to beat you with with with, with organization, with the tactical setup. Uh, you know, you would get one or two moments from Clement Matawas, one or two moments of magic from Innocent Mucheneka, uh, and that was just about it. But now they're going with uh, signings that, listen, these are exciting players who can Shut open up, up matches uh, and uh, decide matches in, 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 in a moment with uh, one piece of skill mm. or an out outrageous goal that they managed to score. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'm just going down this list as you were speaking there. My goodness. They've signed uh, Sipon Lovu from Ulayo City. Clive Augusto from Gezi Platinum Stars. Harare City's Marvin Gaki. That's pace. That's trickery. Mm. And then we've also, we also hear that Gezi Platinum Stars goalkeeper Donovan Burnett, Tichana Chipunza from the same team and Donald Deguru have also in, uh, uh, indicated that they, they intend to join the Gamecocks. This mm. will be some team if they can pull off yeah, all these portions. deals that yeah exactly yeah. It'll be a mixed portion won't yeah. you? <laughs> that's a that's a that's a very very good uh, uh very good move that they've done you know like we said that the average age of the players that they are signing younger players as well my donovan i think that's uh, one of the best uh, acquisitions out of out of those uh, those, those players i think uh, uh they, they need they needed that as well but uh 
I was, I was also looking at Caps United. You know what? They were playing last season. They couldn't get out of their defensive mode. They were playing, passing the ball around very well. They missed uh, Bamusi so much. He is back. And now they've got another winger on the other side, uh, Caprignoni, We who can also do the same job. I think they can actually be dangerous. If they maintain the performance of last season and add those two wingers, I'm sure that they can also be up there uh, with uh, FC Platinum and Chigeni. Well, the guys in the studio is already, already making their predictions for the coming uh, season. Uh, but we'll be doing that later on in time. Today, we are discussing the game calls. What are your thoughts? Tell us on our platform, WhatsApp platform, 0731-168-045. I am Clemens Matau, chicken in midfielder. You're listening to ZFM Sports. Let's give you the rest of your local sports news in rugby. Zimbabwe Rugby Union President Aaron Jani says the union is working flat out to ensure that the national under-20 team, the Young Sables, claim the Barty's Trophy Pool B and seal promotion to Pool A. Jani highlighted that ZRU are firmly behind the Young Sables uh, campaign, which is one of the top plans for 2019. Zimbabwe hosts the Pool B games from the 1st to the 7th of April at a venue to be announced and will play alongside the Ivory Coast, Morocco and Madagascar. Finishing bottom of Pool B will be catastrophic for the Young Sables as it means they'll slip down to Pool C. In netball news, with just over five months to go before the 2019 Netball World Cup in Liverpool, England, national team coach Lloyd Makunde says they need to utilise the time left to ensure they're in a position to compete very well. The Gems coach said they have requested the National Association to try and arrange friendly matches with some of the top countries such as Malawi and South Africa who will also compete at the World Cup. The World Cup will take place for the 12th to the 21st of July with 16 countries vying for the title. We'll wrap it up with bodybuilding news where the National Federation of Zimbabwe Bodybuilding and Fitness will host this year's edition of Novice Championships Contest on the 30th of March at the Empire Gym in Harare. Commonly known as Bodybuilding for Beginners Contest, NFS, NFZ, Double BF, I say the event is now running under the banner Novice Zimbabwe Bodybuilding and Fitness Championships. Promising athlete Gerald Woodend won the of his title last year. Here we go again. Enjoy World Class Radio Online. ZFM Stereo is available on TuneIn. Search for ZFM Stereo and you got it. To all you Twitter heads, connect with ZFM Stereo on twitter.com forward slash ZFM Stereo forward slash ZFM Stereo. From the front of the grid to the back of the net, it's ZFM Sport. International Sports News Roundup, where the world comes out to play. And we go out to play at Newlands because it is the fifth and final match in the one-day series between South Africa and Pakistan. And it is all level at two apiece. Opening batsman Fakhar Zaman hit an aggressive 70 before Pakistan's inning stalled in the series, deciding fifth and final one-day international this afternoon. With the series at stake, Pakistan made 240 for eight after being sent into bat at Newlands. While Zaman was at the crease, Pakistan were on course for a big total. He was fourth out after after a 73 ball innings when the total was on 128 in the 25th over but the scoring rate slowed after his dismissal with only 49 runs scored in the next 15 overs Ahmed Wasim batting at number 8 gave the innings late impetus hitting 47 not out of 31 balls he hit sixes of Dale Stain and Kangisa Rabada in the last two overs right uh, let's uh, see how the run chase is uh, getting on uh, South Africa are currently 71 for one it looks like they've uh, just gone off for a quick drinks break uh, after 11 overs 71 for one the man out Hashim Amla he was out for uh, 14 uh, Quinton de Kock is 34 not out and uh, Hendrix is 19 not out so uh, the current run rate 6.45 and they need 4.35 and over to get uh, to the total so uh, Barry uh, all-rounders Dwayne Pretorius and uh, Palakwai both taking two wickets. Uh, 
in what would say you would say was a pretty disciplined performance to uh, restrict Pakistan. As we said earlier in that report, Pakistan were at one stage on course for uh, at least uh, 310, 320. Yeah, 100%. And uh, look, it's all they could do, uh, were, uh, the South African bowling attack. And that is put the ball into the right areas, make sure that they're putting pressure on the batsmen because pressure was on them as uh, um, Zaman was still at the crease. And after that, look, that, that disciplined performance that managed to snare that important wicket then got them over the line to get uh, to restrict Pakistan in inverted commas uh, to that score. Yeah, Zaman hitting 10 falls and making his first half century after a sequence of low scores in both the tests and the one-day internationals. He was dropped actually on 20 when uh, he slashed Rabada to Hashim Amla, who could not hold a sharp uh, chest-high chance. So, all four matches in the series, which is tied at two all, have been won by the side batting second, uh, Mike. Although the record at Newlands favours the team batting first by 28 to 12, can you see South Africa getting home and uh, winning the series 3-2? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I would uh, probably uh, give them the favourites tag at the moment. Uh, they are now 98 for 1 uh, after 14 overs. So they're, they're moving along at a fair clip. Uh, Quinton de Kock is the main, of course, uh, uh, aggressor at the moment. He's got 41 runs uh, off uh, 34 balls. He's already smashed 6 fours and a 6. Uh, and he's being supported by Hendricks, who's got a 26 from 27. So the, their scoring rate is mm. way above that which is expected. And so, if you get the feeling that if Quinton de Kock mark uh, bats for the next 10 overs, uh, this game will be set uh, for South Africa as long as they keep wickets in hand. Yeah, most definitely. And I think uh, he's, he's, he's in good form. I think he got 100 it was, is in the last game. Uh, yeah. He got exactly 100. Yeah, um, uh, yeah he's, he's got to be uh, the man that uh, has got to lead South Africa um, over the line in this game and uh, go on and get a big score. Zimbabwe's finest, finest crew. ZFM Stereo. Around the world in 60 seconds. International Sports News. We start in Ireland, Ireland number eight. CJ Stander is looking forward to his battle against his opposite number, Billy Vunipola, of uh, when England visit the Aviva Stadium in Dublin on Saturday. Vunipola is in line to play just his fifth test in 27 months after putting a series of injuries behind him, including, get this, three broken arms and several knee issues. Ireland boss Joe Schmidt has warned his side against England's brutality and the hard-carrying Vunipola will be at the forefront of that, though Stander knows there's plenty of uh, subtlety uh, to the Saracen Stars game also. In the UAE, Brooks Kepka has taken a swipe at the slowpokes on the golfing circuit, saying he can't understand why some players take as much time over a shot as they do. The issue reared its head again at last week's Dubai Desert Classic, where eventual champion Bryson Deschambeau's uh, deliberate pre-shot preparation was a frequent topic of conversation. Kepka recently appeared on Golf Monthly's podcast with Michael Weston. And when asked if he felt the criticism slow players receive was fair, he didn't hesitate in his response, uh, saying that they're too slow. America, uh, the NBA, fined New Orleans Pelicans forward Anthony Davis $50,000 for violating a rule prohibiting players of their rep- uh, or their representatives uh, from making public trade demands. Davis's agents, Rich Paul, uh, told ESPN on Monday that his client wants to be traded to a team that allows him a chance to win consistently and compete for a championship, adding that Davis wanted to be honest and clear with his intentions uh, to give the team time to plan for his departure. The team later acknowledged Davis had requested a trade over the weekend. That is your sport in 60. Play of the day. Wacky Wednesday. One of the things that uh, to later Oliver Mtukuz has been commended for was his mentorship and, of course, helping the next generation. And if you didn't know, Mahube is an Afro jazz pop ensemble put together by Steve Dyer and the late Tuku and is lauded for inviting both seasoned veteran artists as well as upcoming artists to be part of his projects. It famously gave a stellar performance at the Haifa two years ago with Tuku and Dyer at their best. By then, Barry Menandi's season as a ticket seller was past its prime. <laughs> <laughs> and he was no longer manning the gates at <laughs> Oh, you fool, man. <laughs> but that actually one of my, 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 my favorite tracks from, from Tuku. Absolutely. It's, it's a quintessential absolutely. African track. It is, it is. It absolutely is. And, and, and fittingly for Wacky Wednesday, I mean, Kunanga Munuro is never a good thing, but this one clearly says, Do it. Well, the Daily Sports Trivia Question is brought to you by Profeeds. Profeeds, your feed and farm professionals. 
Okay, it's competition time. Simply send us a WhatsApp message with the hashtag ProFeeds Trivia. It might be the one lucky listener we call back. You'll fill two questions, and if you get both correct, you'll be our daily winner. And you know the chance of winning our fabulous first prize of 2019, which is a Capri Double Door 290 litre fridge. Now, when does the first draw happen? It'll be on Friday, the 22nd of February. Right, uh, we are going to our lines and uh, we are going to Mastringo this evening. And the most important thing about this caller is that he is a Liverpool supporter. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and he supports Dian Barry. This week we've been getting Liverpool yeah. fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll Liverpool fans. But Tango and also. Yes. Good evening, Gilbert Sabando. Good evening and welcome to CFM Stereo. Hi, guys. How are you? Uh, we good, thanks. How's Mastringo this evening? No, it's very hot. I am keeping here. Okay. <laughs> right. Can Liverpool do the business tonight against Leicester? I thought, yeah, that's usual. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Right, courtesy of Pro Feeds, uh, are you ready for your two questions, uh, Gilbert? Yeah, I'm very ready. For it. Right, first question: uh, What is the nickname of the Zimbabwe cricket national team? What is the nickname of the Zimbabwe cricket national team? No, this is not cricket team. Mm. Mm. Come on. Can I give you a clue? Yes, please. If you are from Mashingo, you should know because the nickname is derived from a pattern at Great Zimbabwe. Yes. Um, you couldn't have put it any simpler. Absolutely. Oh, come, come on. on. Come on. Yes. yes. What is their nickname? They should have one. Yes. yes. Finally. <laughs> Finally, okay. Right, you're halfway there. Question number two. Which country is hosting the 2019 ICC Cricket World Cup? Crubs. Oh. <laughs> oh, a big sigh, that one. <laughs> Do you need a clue? Which country is hosting the 2019 ICC Cricket World Cup? Can you give me a clue, please? Uh, it'll be played at venues such as the Oval, Lords, what? Lords, yeah. Taunton. Is it England? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, an answer was, was, was a question. <laughs> well then, uh, Gilbert, uh, courtesy of. Uh, Profeeds, your name will go into the draw for the 22nd of February for a chance to win that Capri Double Door 290 litre fridge. <laughs> well done, Keep tuned in to ZFM Stereo. Cheers, mate. The Daily Sports Trivia question was brought to you by Profeeds. Profeeds, the performance feed. To all you Twitter heads, connect with CFM Stereo on twitter.com forward slash CFM Stereo. Forward slash CFM Stereo. Fan Zone. Get in touch with the team and have your say your way. Operator. Okay, the show that's for the fans. Get in touch with us. So with your thoughts and your views on 0731-168-045, 0731-168-045, Twitter and Facebook. Follow and interact with at ZFM Sport. Lots of topical issues in the world of sport. Pakistan and South Africa locked in action at Newlands in Cape Town. Who will get over the line? The Proteas or Pakistan? Send us your predictions. Manchester City, can they close? the gap on Liverpool in the last 14 matches or will Liverpool pull further and further away and also Dynamo's not happy with Valentine Cardonzo chicken in cock a hoop can they challenge FC Platinum no, certainly well Russell good evening to you you're writing for us uh, writing us from uh, Skies that's in Ulawayo and this one says guys I know I'm a bit all out of topic but I just wanted to say, the way Bulawayo uh, supports football, don't you guys think that it'll be wise to play our last of the AFCON qualifiers at Barber Field Stadium? What's your thoughts on that one, boys? 
Uh, because that full house was something to behold when Orlando Pirates pulled it. No, the, the, I, I, I understand the sentiment. Sure. But uh, here is my thing. I would love to see our Warriors play around the country uh, in more of their friendly matches, uh, in more of their their minor engagements. Uh, but I believe for official matches uh, that uh, the national team should play in their home ground. Yeah, their the home national ground sport. is the National Sports Stadium. Uh, and that's where they understand. should play. You won't see England going to play at Anfield. No. Nope. Uh, because the punters in the northwest would love to, a closer look at England. They play at Wembley. Yeah, uh, yes. Italy plays at Stadio Olimpico in Rome. Uh, and uh, that's just about it. So yeah. uh, that, that's the system I believe in. Uh, and I know there's the sentiment that, you know, we should be playing everywhere. But mm. uh, ultimately, if it's an important fixture like this one, play in the National Sports Stadium. Yeah, I agree with you 100%, Mike. The national team needs to have a home. Mm. That's where the home ground advantage also comes in yeah. as well. The, you know, I think Zimbabwe, they're looking at South Africa. South Africa has been doing it, uh, moving around provinces playing, but it has actually killed mm. brand Bafana Bafana yeah. because they, they don't, they don't have get a home. the crowd anymore because they don't have a home. Exactly. Well, uh, straight after this fan zone, we'll be going into the beautiful game where we talk about the leagues of Europe and the EPL is a big one and the next couple of messages are about the EPL and this one says, uh, it seems Ole will now get a rude awakening. EPL Haina Wuchipa. I I'm an Arsenal fan, but I'm rooting for Liverpool to win the league and Man United to miss out on a top four <laughs> spot. My goodness. And that's coming from an Arsenal fan. Uh, this one uh, is from Silas, a regular contributor to the show. It says, gents, I called it yesterday. Look at my last message about Agent Rafa. Great result for the Geordies. Big game tonight for Liverpool. Silas, you'll never walk alone. Let me just read the message he sent yesterday. It's right here. It says, I am calling it today. Agent Rafa will do us a favor and take points off City. Another one who called it correctly was Mike Madura, and he did so on Monday night mm, after the show. Prophet Michael. As we're walking out of the studio, he said, tomorrow night... Man City is going down to Newcastle. I looked at him bemused and he was absolutely well, right. Well, listen, uh, if, if you've noticed, uh, Rafa Benitez, he, he chops and changes. Mm. Uh, and uh, he tends to decide that, you know what, this match is winnable. Uh, this match is not winnable. Right. Uh, and he has done that. And uh, I believe kudos to him for managing his squad. But there is always a, 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 a team that he picks. And when he picks that team at home, uh, you know the team with Richie, uh, the team with uh, what's uh, the guy? The guy who scored uh, the, the the striker. What's his name? Uh, Rondon. Rondon, Rondon, Rondon yeah. When he Rondon, picks Rondon, those guys yeah. in the team, and he's playing his full strength team with yeah. Lasalle's at the back, and they are playing at St James's Park, yeah. they are a very different proposition uh, mm. to, to 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 Newcastle that you can play on any other day. Uh, and even though they fell behind uh, after 24 seconds, the one thing that Rafa Benitez is gifted with is that he's tactically astute yes. and he knows how to organize organize his team so if you saw in that match yes you could tell that Manchester City was the better team it had the better players but Newcastle were very well Organized. They didn't collapse. Yeah, yeah. They, didn't they didn't collapse. collapse the goal, Many yeah. teams would have collapsed after that uh, quick start by uh, Manchester City, but they kept it tight. And then when it got to the last 25 minutes, you could saw that they they, they, they just basically say to themselves, you know what? We can go we, for it. We're we can sure. get a point. Yeah. Yeah. And then when they equalized, they thought, you know, well, hang on, why not? Why we not can get all good? three. Yeah. And they, they got all three. Back. Uh, yeah, that's what I liked about it. They they didn't give hey, so much. Hey, effort. hey, calm down. It's still the fan zone. Oh, okay. We're doing the EPL oh, yes. in the beautiful game. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm so engrossed. Keep your that, powder man. dry. Keep <laughs> your powder dry. This one's from Sancti. It says, hi, lads. I just want to say, Rafa, you beauty. The dream lives on. So that, by Mike Madonna, was just a foretaste. Highlights. A trailer, if you like, of the beautiful game. Uh, let's go to Twitter. Some messages coming in here. A continuation of the fascinating discussion that Alois and I had, had on last night's show. Uh, this one is from Emerson. Uh, Kei Shonge says... Uh, maybe Zifa is piggybacking on the Platinum and Orlando match as a yardstick. Five dollars, it was a full stadium with more turned away. I don't know, man. It's that turn wrong or right turn. Sink or swim, all depends how they are structured. I don't uh, get the last bit of that message, but I think uh, uh, he's talking about the fact that, listen, uh, FC Platinum had a bumper crowd at Barber Fields yeah, sure. Stadium. People had Usually, to be turned away yeah. on a five dollar charge, mm. uh, and and therefore, the Warriors uh, maybe are using that rationale, should I say Zifa, uh, to, to, to charge $10. But you look the world over, 
you know, the national team games have never been at parity in terms of cost or expense with club games. Yeah. The club games are usually more expensive. They're more expensive, exactly. And uh, listen, and club games happen week in, week out. And the desire, because national team games are so fast-paced, and uh, chances are you'll get in Europe two games in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a week, and then you'll go three months without getting get, okay. getting another uh, game. You, you want to get as many fans into the stadium as is possible, and then assist those fans to watch the do, national do, team. Do you know one thing that shows that uh, every club fan is not necessarily a staunch national team ga- uh, it's fan? It's uh, it's is the fact that when the national team plays, you're not able to fill up your stadium. Yet, yeah. if you have, uh, if you c- calculate the amount of fans that in Harare, Dynamos has, that Caps United has, that Black Rhinos has, you'd that Harare you'd, 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 f- you'd feel that on a weekend that there's no football, all those fans who regularly play. attend football matches around the city would yeah. come together, uh, including those from neighboring towns, ETC, some no, from Bulawayo and Shavane, and fill up the National Sports Stadium, and you wouldn't even be able to get a seat. But that is not the case. People's like affiliations are actually stronger for their clubs than they are for their national team. Yeah, it just happened with the Dream Team. The Dream mm. Team, it actually did happen. Mm. I think it's all because of a the hype. glorious uh, era. Yes, mm. they need to hype. But we, 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 we now have a tradition that we don't hype our matches as well. And they shouldn't look at the situation at, at Baba Fields. That was Orlando Pirates that filled up that stadium. You know the sentiment that was mm. there. If he, if um, FC Platinum goes back to Blau and play Oroya there, they'll be well, lucky to have 5,000. Well, they're, they're, they're playing this weekend this and I think uh, Alois's uh, theory may well be proved uh, correct that mm. uh, if you see the crowd that will show up at Barber Fields this weekend versus Oroya, I don't think it'll be anywhere near uh, the numbers the one, that yeah. we saw yeah. when they played Orlando Pirates. So who was the draw card? Orlando Pirates. 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 Yeah. Exactly. And people wanted to watch a quality football match. We're getting into the beautiful game. We'll read, uh, in fact, all of the messages that are coming through relate to the EPL, so we might as well get into it, boys. The big leagues, the big teams, the big players. The beautiful game on ZFM Sport. All the rivalry. Game-changing moments. Aguero! All the updates from the Premier League on ZFM Sport. This is the league we want to watch. Let's give you last night's results from the English Premier League. For the first time in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's Manchester United career as a manager, he fell behind. Two goals they were down to Burnley. They clawed their way back to make it 2 all at Old Trafford. Arsenal go back to winning ways with a 2-1 victory over Cardiff City. Fulham, my goodness, the comeback of the season. And how Mitrovic heading up, of course, the comeback as they scored four in the second half while after they trailed by two goals at the break, beating Brighton and Hove Albion a 4-2. Huddersfield Town edged by Everton who were down to 10 men uh, for the majority of that match a 1-0. Wolves too good for West Ham 3-0. But of course the surprise result of the night was Newcastle United coming from behind to beat champions Manchester City 2-1 at St. James's Park on Tyneside. And Pep Guardiola says anything can still happen in the Premier League title race after City were surprisingly beaten by the Magpies looking to to close the gap on Premier League leaders Liverpool to just one point. City made the perfect start at St. James's Park as Sergio Aguero scored after just 24 seconds. However, Newcastle replied with two second half goals to dent City's title ambitions. Magpies midfielder Matt Ritchie acknowledged that the mood around Newcastle United has been low, but is hopeful his late winner can spur the side on for the rest of the campaign. Let's hear from Rafael Benitez following that famous win by Newcastle United. We had we had a game plan, and the game plan was not considered to concede a goal in the first minute. And then the reaction of the players was really good. So we said at half time we have to stay in the game, we have to keep going, we have our chances. So be sure that we continue working as hard as we did. And I think that the, the fans appreciate that in the end because just because we won is the way that we won against a very good team, working so hard, fighting for each other, and. Uh, until the last minute. So this one, 
it's an important game for us because we uh, will give us more confidence. But uh, the main one will be uh, the last one when we get the points there to stay up. That's it. Uh, Rafael Benitez uh, there speaking to the media after his side uh, beat uh, Manchester City 2-1 and it was the first time uh, I think they'd beaten Manchester City in about 25 matches so a good result by Rafael Benitez and Mark we can talk uh, talk a lot about the players and say this and that but when you when you run through that uh, Newcastle United squad you see a lot of championship quality players and the only thing world class about Newcastle is the man that is calling the shots that is Rafael Benitez and you've got to say that he's tactically a suit yeah you, you, you've hit it you've hit the nail on the head there I, I would say three points for Rafa Benitez mm-hmm. last night because mm-hmm. he is he's he's one organized guy yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's he he had a plan in his mind when Manchester City arrived at St. James's Park and in the back of his mind he knew it was going to be one of organization gentlemen we are going to play to a game plan we are going to be organized we're not going to be lackluster in defence. Mm. We are going to push forward when we can, and we will try and seek to score goals. And you got to say, hats off to Rafa Benitez. Three points, fully deserved. And, and Alois, uh, they fell behind after 24 seconds, and many sides, including Sterla sides in the Premier League, would have crumbled uh, under that sort of uh, start up by Manchester City. Uh, but uh, they carried on, like Paz said organized, stuck rigidly to their game plan because the one thing they didn't do was panic. Yeah. They stayed the course. Yeah. I actually think that, that is what won them the game. You know, if, if you ask me, because a lot of teams, like all, almost all the teams in the Premier League, they know about Manchester City. Mm. They, uh, they give them all that respect. And when they come there and they give you one goal, you know, in the first first thirty seconds, then you will be like, okay, here we go again now. They're going. Because they were coming from uh, from actually three, four games that they were actually banging in a lot of goals. Yeah. You know, so they would, they would think, ah, now here we go. But they stood. They didn't give up. And one thing I liked about, about them, they didn't sit back. Yes, they, they, they were very tactical, mm-hmm. but they didn't do that what a lot of other clubs do. They didn't park the bus. They didn't park the bus. When they had the opportunity to go forward, yeah, they, they went forward. They still went forward. That's what I liked about it. But the m- most uh, important part that I saw about uh, Newcastle yesterday, they restricted Manchester City to play crosses. Yes, yeah. they, and they, that's the and point. That's the, that's the and biggest, I, biggest and, point. And can I, can I say something? Mm. Also added to that restriction, what was key about it is that David Silva, yes. their most inspirational and their yes. most creative player, yeah. was virtually shut out of the game. Sh- I remember yes, speaking to you, Barry, and I was saying, listen, exactly. I actually thought that yes. David Silva had been substituted off, <laughs> and yeah, I was surprised to shut, see him. They shut so, yeah, Silva. They, suppl- yeah. they closed they the supply. Yeah, yeah, they closed the supply to David Silva yeah. and from him. I, w- I want to add to that, and, and it might sound weird to say, and I hope you understand the heart of it. Newcastle played... A, they out Man city Man City. Mm. Here's how. They restricted Man City to playing in areas that they Be, wanted yes. Man City to play in. So what you had was that as Man City was coming through the middle, which is they, which they love doing that, and then they coming out wide, yeah, they, the they, they filtered them wide early. So in the in the in the middle third, they were out wide and then tried to attack them there. So they kept going from side to side uh, and trying to get uh, in the right. Good, how good was Hayden? Uh, oh my goodness. For that job as the phenomenal. holding midfielder who was patrolling the central area. Phenomenal. phenomenal. His pivot was he phenomenal. Was. And, and the way that he controlled the shift. Because he actually controlled them. And, and, and what you get is that yeah. Man City is the sort of team that shifts you from side to side and then look for the long diagonal. They get behind you, like for the goal that they scored for uh, Sergio Aguero. But what Hayden did was that he managed that shift and managed to move the team very efficiently. And now Manchester City have now dropped 16 points in the uh, 24 Premier League games uh, this season having drawn twice and lost four times already more than they dropped in the entire 2017-18 season in which of course they were crowned champions with more than one, with 100 points. Let's hear from Guardiola who is still hopeful the citizens can close the gap on log leaders Liverpool. Well, it's a good night. It was not uh, our best night, so we found the goal because we didn't do before of the goal nothing exceptional to score a goal because it was 24 seconds, but it didn't help us. But sometimes happen. I can understand the players. So and nothing. Congratulations, Newcastle. So they didn't shoot one shoot in target and after the goal, but uh, we didn't play like normally we are. Sometimes happen. 
a lot of games sometimes happen. Unfortunately, we could not win. But of course, when you are behind the, the leader, you have to, you don't have to drop points because you help them. And of course, every game is one less. But we are in January, so we have a lot of titles and games to still to play. Pep Guardiola's hope founded in the very fact that there's still quite a bit of football to be played in season 2018-19 of the English Premier League. But you're taking a look at how that result has impacted the standings. Liverpool leading the way. They have 60 points, four more than uh, Manchester City who have played one game more, meaning that Liverpool tonight can extend the gap to seven points. Spurs also play tonight. They are on 51 points, five points behind Manchester City with the opportunity to draw within two points. Chelsea also in action there, 47 points and then Arsenal are in fifth and Manchester United uh, is still in sixth place. Looking at the (laughs) bottom, Manchester... (laughs) Okay. Oh my God. That was the IOR. They say say form is temporary, sixth is permanent. (laughs) You know know know, know why I'm laughing, man? Uh, I was showing Perry a message, one of my Facebook friends. uh, He says, my cousin, my little cousin, is six years old. He was asking, why is Manchester United always at number six? Always at number six. <laughs> <laughs> she says, I don't know how to respond to the kid. Can you tell me what I That's the year you go to school. <laughs> uh, well, Newcastle United, the courtesy of that win, has moved up, of course, out of the relegation zone. It created a bit of a baffer. It's now a five-point gap between the Magpies and Cardiff City, who occupy the last of the relegation place. Right, Liverpool have the opportunity to take full command of the Premier League title race when they host uh, Leicester tonight as the Reds could open up a seven-point gap at the top of the table. City's shock loss to Newcastle has opened the door for Jurgen Klopp's men to take uh, what is starting to be considered a decisive advantage at the summit of the standings with only 14 rounds of matches remaining. Let's get the pre-match thoughts of Jurgen Klopp. I think Klopp has said everything about it that they like playing against uh, against the top sides, which makes makes sense. Uh, they are not that much a counter-attacking side anymore than they were, than they have been in the past. But of course, it's a massive, massive threat. So, and if you, it's, we all had these situations. If you play against teams, they 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 don't give you a lot of space or whatever. Um, then it's it's not too comfortable, and a lot of teams struggle with that, obviously, to create. And these are the games they they lost um, when they concede the counter attacks or whatever stuff like that but it's um, for them it's we expect a very dangerous opponent that's how it is and um because they have quality if we can go through the team that's a that's a that's a super TNC. but it's all about yeah what can i say squeezing everything out to out of the of the players and uh, and that we can really perform good enough to win that game uh mike the reds have coped uh, pretty well with the pressure of being out in front but uh, certainly the task at Anfield is not entirely straightforward uh, tonight as uh, Leicester are known to uh, come up and uh, spring a few uh, shocks uh, and they've shown us uh, that once by winning the league and uh, a couple of shocks that they produced this term yeah absolutely they beat Manchester City yep. uh, uh, at the Etihad Stadium they yep. beat uh, Chelsea as well so uh, they're good for a surprise they good like for the a top shock. six clubs uh, they love the top six clubs mm. and uh, they, they're a competent outfit make no mistake about Leicester uh, you know they're not uh, one of the bottom sides they're one of your mid-table teams so they're capable if they play well uh, of uh, giving you one or two headaches and of course, of course uh, they've got Vardy, yeah. who's capable of uh, tucking away a chance if they are created. But I fancy Liverpool tonight. Uh, I think they're motivated. I think uh, Jurgen Klopp and his, uh, and, and his man management and his team management has really been working on psyching yeah. the Liverpool players up to believe that every game you're playing is a cup final. Yep. And he's yep. drilled it yep. into their heads that, you know what, you approach the Leicester City game the same way you approach Arsenal, the same mm. way you approach Man City, Manchester United or Chelsea. So I think you'll find that Liverpool will play to get all three points. So sure. they don't really care, Liverpool, how they get over the line. I think if they win 1-0, 2-1, 3-1, 4-0, if it's swashbuckling, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a bonus for the fans. Yep. But I think uh, Jürgen Klopp is saying to the team, get over the line, yeah. get the three points. Yeah, and of course, they, they do have a good record against Leicester. They uh, have uh, won the last four in a row against them between uh, 1987 and September 1996. So uh, the record uh, speaks for itself. Just looking ahead to the other games uh, tonight, uh, Bournemouth against uh, Chelsea. Southampton will face uh, Crystal Palace. Tottenham are at home to Watford. And then, of course, the game of the night for us is Liverpool up against Leicester City.
Paolo Rossi, Marco van Basten, George Weah, Gabriel Batistuta, Alessandro Del Piero. Serie A has been home to some of the world's finest strikers. And now, they welcome arguably the greatest of them all, Cristiano Ronaldo, the best of Italian football on Z. There's some Coppa Italia matches uh, tonight. Fiorentina takes on Roma, Atalanta versus Juventus. But news coming out of Italy is that striker Christoph Piacek uh, promised AC Milan fans there was plenty more to come from him after scoring twice on his first start for the club in a 2-0 Coppa Italia quarterfinal victory over Napoli. After making his debut off the bench in a nil-all Serie A draw against Napoli last weekend, striker Piacek uh, capitalised on the opportunity to play from the start against the same opponents in Coppa Italia action last Last night, uh, the Poland international demonstrated his finishing abilities when grabbing both goals in the last eight tie at the San Siro, keeping Milan on course for a third and final appearance in four years after joining. From Genoa, the 23-year-old is confident he can continue to score goals for the Rossoneri, who paid out a reported fee of 35 million euro to fill the void left by Gonzalo Higuain's departure. Like I said earlier, those Coppa Italia uh, fixtures tonight, uh, Fiorentina versus Roma, Atalanta versus Juventus. The league that makes football oh so beautiful. Where artistry and strokes of genius are the order of any day. Where the game is played with a smile and the little master creates his magic. All the news from the Spanish La Liga on ZFM Sport. The goal, the world wants it. Also, cup action in Spain where Rodrigo scored twice in stoppage time to complete a hat trick and fire Valencia to the Copa del Rey semi finals with a 3 1 win over Getafe. Getafe, who had won the first leg 1 0, took the lead in the decider just 38 seconds into the match as Mestaya, courtesy of Jorge Molino. But Rodrigo scored in the 61st minute, then struck a dramatic double in the 9th. In the 92nd minute, as well as 93rd, shall I say, second minute of added time, as well as third minute of added time, as Valencia advanced 3 2 on aggregate. Tonight's matches Real Betis versus Espanol. That one is locked at 1 0. And Barcelona will have to come from behind. They trail Sevilla by two goals to nil. Tonight's action is at the Camp Nou. Horsepower unmatched. Talk to beat the best. Speed. Unrivaled, sleek, and easy on the eye. Let's get behind the wheel of football engineered to perfection. The Bundesliga, made in Germany. Right, our final stop this evening is the Bundesliga where Borussia Dortmund midfielder Julian Wegel has confirmed the Bundesliga club turned down his request for a move to Paris Saint-Germain. Dortmund sporting director Michael Zorc is adamant the club will not lose any more players in the January transfer window after Christian Pulsic signed for Chelsea in a deal that will see him move at the end of the season. Dortmund are reportedly already lining up a replacement for him and want a deal for Crystal Palace's Wilfred Zaha at the end of the season. Can you see this happening yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. Zaha, Zaha to Dortmund is, a, is actually a good uh, a good signing and for Dortmund we are not selling anymore we don't we, we don't sell it you are strengthened no we we <laughs> strengthen we don't sell it <laughs> no hard goals but I think it's look uh, in truth of, uh, as a club strategy I think it's, it's the way to go I think yeah. the reason why Dortmund fell away was because Dortmund was losing its its top talent and mostly All to Bayern time, Munich yeah. and strengthening its 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 competition. So I think if that's the club strategy to hold on to their best talent, then they they've got a, a good thing going. Okay, just to give you a, a final update here, yeah, the match is still ongoing between uh, Pakistan and uh, South Africa. Remember, Pakistan making two hundred and forty for eight, and we can tell you that uh, South Africa are well and truly in the hunt. One hundred and forty six for two after twenty point one over. So they are way ahead of the required rate they require just another 95 runs with eight wickets remaining in 29.5 overs quentin de Kock, the man who's doing all the damage 83 from just 57 balls he's now knocked off 11 fours and three sixes and faf duplessis has joined him he's on 11 from 15 balls shucks uh, Quinton de Kock going at a 320 rate in a one day international has gone in puts the cock he in. won't come out <laughs> 
<laughs> on that note, may God richly bless you. That's my story. <laughs> and I'll stick it to it. But Andy, out. Be sure to catch ZFM Sport every weekday on ZFM Stereo. My station, your station.